What's so wrong? Nothing. Why? No. What's so wrong? Nothing's wrong. Why do you think something's wrong? <sighs> Never mind. What's the name of the lead actress again? Bruce. No, the name of the lead actress. I told you. Bruce. Her name's Bruce. That's right. Fine. Bruce. And the guy that plays the detective that arrests them? Demarest? Yeah, that arrests them. Demarest. Okay, Yoda. Them arrest. Whatever makes you happy. Just tell me what his name is. Demarest. I can't work in these conditions. I'll be in my trailer. From 1942, it's Pardon My Sarong with Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. And here we see the team return to Universal after being loaned out to MGM for Rio Rita. They come back and they're trying to recapture the success of their service comedies in the Navy and Buck Privates. And this film actually was very popular. It was Universal's highest grossing film for 1942 and the second highest grossing film overall for the year. So the film was very successful. I did like this. It's not one of my favorites, but they are they do have a lot of fun and they are funny. I agree. It's a very different film than I remembered. I hadn't seen it in about 35 years, and in watching it, I had forgotten how much of it takes place before they actually get to the tropical island. My memories of the film were the bus, which is very funny, in the tropical island, but they actually have a good portion of the film take place before they get to the island. Now, it's a great setup at the beginning. They work for a bus company, and the head of the bus company is questioning his manager, saying, where are these guys? Because they can't find Abbott and Costello's bus. And the manager says, I don't know. They don't even have a crosstown route. They don't even take a left-hand turn. They just drive in a big square. And the next thing we see is Costello driving the bus and passing a sign for Los Angeles and they worked at a Chicago bus company. So that's pretty funny. And it turns out there's a guy on the bus, Robert Page, who plays Tommy Layton. He's a playboy millionaire who's gonna be in a yacht race from California to Hawaii, and he gets the boys to drive him to Los Angeles. So it's a pretty funny gimmick, and it sets up, and they have a lot of things that they do, a lot of misadventures in Los Angeles before they actually get on the boat and go to the tropical island. Yes, I feel like in the beginning it actually drags a little bit and they do have some funny jokes there, but I think once they get to the island, it's a lot more fun. I wasn't a fan of the musical numbers, though. You know, when I was younger and I watched these films, I was watching them for the comedy of Abbott and Costello. So when we would get to a musical number, I felt the same as you did. I felt like it killed the momentum of the film a little bit. Watching it as an adult, though, I really could appreciate the fact that the Ink Spots are singing here. They get to sing Shout, Brother, Shout, which is a great number. And they're actually in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So that's pretty cool that they were in this film. Also, Tip, Tap, and Toe do a dance routine here, and they are amazing. Specifically, Raymond Winfield. The way he moves on the oval table and he gets his legs to slide like his feet are buttered somehow, it's as good as any dance move that you will see now, and you have to see it to believe it. Yes, I do agree with that. I liked that part. Now, eventually, William Demarest shows up in Los Angeles. He's been hired by the bus company to arrest the boys for stealing the bus. And he has some funny shtick with Abbott and Costello, specifically with Bud Abbott. Bud Abbott gets to do a comedy routine by himself with William Demarest as the straight man. And it's the only time I remember that happening in the entire history of their partnership, Abbott and Costello, where Abbott got to do, he got to be the comedian against a straight man. And I thought it was fun to watch that. I liked seeing Abbott do something different than we've ever seen before. I agree. So while Demarest is trying to arrest them, Tommy Layton is at the club 
and he meets up with Virginia Bruce's character. Her brother is supposed to race against Leighton, and it turns out that Leighton's ship's steward has stolen her brother's crew. And that's going to come into play in a few minutes. Meanwhile, Abbott and Costello are trying to get away from William Demarest, and in doing so, they wind up driving the bus off the pier, and they go to the bottom of the ocean. And I've always remembered this bit. Lou turns on the windshield wipers when the bus is sitting on the bottom of the ocean. And I thought that was hilarious. Yes. And I still do. So... Leighton's aboard his boat. He finds that his crew is completely gone because Virginia Bruce has gone ahead of him and fired the crew. So he kidnaps her. He brings up the anchor needing a crew. And lo and behold, there's Bud Abbott and Lou Costello on the anchor. And that was a pretty funny bit. And they also take aboard the seal, the harbor seal named Sharky. And that's good for some laughs later on. They start heading for Hawaii, but Virginia Bruce has sabotaged the compass. They wind up lost in a hurricane, and that's how they get to this uncharted tropical island. Right. Once they got to the island, I thought that it really picked up. I actually thought that the movie went very fast at that point, and I did like the beginning because it did have a couple of jokes, but here it had a lot more. And we get a lot of fun characters here. Nan Nguyen plays Luana, who's the daughter of the chief, and she winds up being betrothed to Lou because he rings this bell and he's going to be the hero of the village because he's going to go to the temple at the volcano and save the village. Meanwhile, we have a character played by Lionel Atwill called Varnoff. Varnoff is supposedly an archaeologist. What he actually is is a jewel thief. His men are responsible for the volcano erupting, and they do that on purpose because when the village sends a hero to the temple, the hero is wearing jewels from the village. And Lionel Atwell's character, his men wind up getting the jewels that way. So there's a good setup there. And then Leif Erikson plays Waba, who's this very big guy, and he's supposed to marry Luana, so he is very unhappy with Lou, and that leads to some good laughs along the way. Yes, I did like Luana in here. You mentioned Sharky earlier. I thought that he was probably my favorite character other than Abbott and Costello, and I thought when they got to the island and as they were doing stuff there, it was very fun and funny. Now, there were a couple musical numbers on the island as well, specifically Vingo Jingo. Now, did you like those? Yes, I did think they said Bingo Jingo, though. When I was a kid, I thought the same thing. <laughs> I, I, I did, so I get it. I thought those numbers kind of fit in. You know, they, they moved the plot a little bit. They were, they were fun for the sake of being fun. But the humor here is the gags. You know, at one point, Lou's up in a tree, and he takes his suspenders off, and he uses them like a giant slingshot. Abbott's throwing him coconuts, and they're dropping Varnoff's henchmen one by one with the coconuts. That's a lot of fun. Eventually, Virginia Bruce is taken prisoner by Varnoff. He puts her on a boat, and he's taking her away, and Lou winds up being the only one left that can save her. So he's on a wakeboard, basically, following the boat, being pulled by the boat. Then a swordfish comes up and cuts the wakeboard in half, and now he's got water skis. Then the swordfish pokes him, and he winds up on the boat fighting. Like I said, it's an excuse for some good sight gags, some physical comedy. It's a lot of fun. It's not supposed to be taken seriously. So if you don't, I think it's very enjoyable. But it does travel quite a bit. I'd forgotten how much of a travel movie it was. In reality, the original title was Road to Montezuma, and it was supposed to kind of duplicate the success of Bob Hope and Bing Crosby's road films. And it does have quite a bit of travel in it because they go from Chicago to Los Angeles to this uncharted tropical island and they have a lot of adventures along the way. And again, I had thought the bulk of the movie was on the island, but that really isn't the case. Yep, I really liked once they got on the island and even when they were on the boat. Again, I think the first part dragged a little bit, but other than that, I think this is one to see. I kind of agree with you. The first part of the movie is a lot slower. I didn't remember it at all. Obviously, I think that's why. I didn't remember it because it wasn't my favorite part. My favorite part certainly is when they get to the island. There's some so many great gags there. Just Lou's costume alone with that great hat that's a fish is so much fun. And I think there's a lot to enjoy in the film. So if you can see it that way, it's one to see. See what I did there? Oh, Daddy.